good evening. Uh, take me just a second to get started. Hope everybody's had a, a very blessed week so far, and uh, uh, the weather's been just beautiful. And God has just really blessed us. You know, it won't be long. We'll start seeing the changes of the leaves, and as we transition, cycling into the fall. And some of the prettiest times of the year, I'd be able to get out and ride around, ride out the parkway and look at them as the, as the trees change colors, the leaves and everything. But uh, as tonight, we're going to look at something. And uh, I was thinking about last night and uh, I've thought about throughout the day and off and on and so, uh, without any delay, let's get started. If you've got your Bible, I want you to turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And uh, I, I, it, this would be easier to preach than it would be to teach. Uh, but I'm going to try to, to do and get through uh, what I need to on this. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, starting with the first verse. And I want you to understand who Paul is talking to as he's writing this letter. He said, Now we beseech you, brethren. So he's talking to the Christians. He's talking to them. He's talking to us today. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our gathering together unto him. Now, uh, verse 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, Paul said, no matter what you hear and, and everything, he says, know that the day of the Lord is right here at us. Now, that's been almost 2,000 years ago that Paul wrote this letter. So that means that we're even closer to the coming of the Lord than it was then, because if they were watching for Jesus Christ to come, how much more should we be watching for Jesus Christ to come? And uh, because you'll see as we get a little bit farther on, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The coming of the Lord shall, uh, uh, for that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first, and that the Son of, and that the, that, and that man of sin be revealed, the Son of perdition. Now, there's going to be that falling away. And, you know, uh, we look forward to the Antichrist and all that appearing. Now, we may not know who he is. Because I'll show you in just a minute. Who opposeth and exalt himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember you not, verse 5, that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. In other words, Paul said, now I taught you some things when I was there with you about how the Antichrist and the false prophet and all them are going to sort of work our way in. And then verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity, or the mystery of sin, doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, this one verse has been looked at in two different ways. In one way, it is looked at as the Holy Ghost being removed from earth. But then on the other hand, it's looked at as 
if it wasn't for the church, the true Christians that keeps is the church body of Christ working as hard as they can trying to win souls. Once they're raptured out, then there's not going to be nobody there to try and preach to you and tell you uh, to do the right things and how to accept Jesus Christ and etc. etc. So uh, we let's look at it as the church is being raptured out. And then, because, and the reason I said let's look at his church being raptured out is because if you go back into the teachings where we talk about Revelation, there's still those that's going to uh, not take the mark of the beast. They're still going to be able to make it and endure through the tribulation, the seven years of tribulation, without taking the mark of the beast. And the only way they're going to be able to do that is through the power of God. So, uh, that's why I look at it as more the church is being removed. And then Satan got free reign because he has no opposition. Now, I'll, and I'll try to give you a little understand of why. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. This word is sword of the spirit and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Now that's talking about the, the false prophet who will do uh, signs and wonders, and uh, um, just like uh, Pharaoh's uh, prophets did, when Moses went to rescue the uh, Hebrew people out of Egypt. And the only thing was that every time they would try to do something, God would just outdo them. And then he started showing them that he had more power than they could do. He could do things that they couldn't. And then, and then we get to verse 10. And with all deceivableness, of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the true that they might be saved. Hmm. With all deceivableness of righteousness in them that perish. Now, as I was thinking about this, I, like I said, I was thinking about this last night, and I was thinking, you know, Paul and them they were fighting spiritual warfare back then, just like we are today. And the only thing today is, the deceivableness is more subtle. It's uh, easier to go with the flow than to resist and take a firm stand. And so, uh, you know, how many believe the lie? I mean, well, you can do what you want to do, and, and God says it's all right. No, no, it's not all right. What God called sin is sin, period. There's no twisting it. There's no perverting it. I listened to something yesterday morning, and I could not believe what I was listening to. And it was... Uh, supposedly on a Christian media outlet. And I thought, you got to be kidding. And, uh, uh, and I'm thinking, how can people believe a lie? And then God showed me this as, as I was, like I said last night. He said, Satan is a deceiver. He's a liar. He's the father of all lies. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He twisted the word of God, and Adam and Eve fell for it. And if he did with them, he tried to with Jesus. The only thing Jesus, he didn't fall for it. 
And yet today, how many is believing a lie? Well, you don't have to go to church to be saved. Well, God says, forsake not the self, assemble yourselves together more as you see these uh, days approaching, as some has. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. I'd rather you be hot or cold than lukewarm, because if you lukewarm, I will spew you out of your uh, of my mouth. So God gives us some a very wise words to try to help us to be rooted, grounded, and established. And what bothers me is I don't think that people understand how they are being deceived to believe the lie. And, and this is what is real scary. Verse 11, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. In other words, God looks and says, Well, if you don't believe my word, then I'll just help you believe the lie. You just go right ahead and believe the lie. And that sounds harsh, but there again, let's see what it says back here in Revelation, the very last chapter. Uh, let's see if I find it right quick, glad. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, verse 12, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work, as his work shall be. And, uh, but then when you look at this and it says in verse 11, for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, verse 12, that they all might be damned who believeth not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, had pleasure in unrighteousness. See, that's one of the things that that really um, bothers me when the church starts looking like the world instead of looking like the church should look. Uh, once in a rare occasion, I may wear just a, a, a cheap plain shirt or a t-top or, or plain t-shirt or uh, a golf type shirt. But most of the time, I'm going to wear a suit or a sports jacket and a tie or a bow tie. Because to me, and, and I'm not saying that everybody in church ought to. You know, I, it, we don't have no dress code for the church. But for me as the pastor, and I think every pastor should present themselves the best they can. And, uh, and it really bothers me when you see uh, ministers that dress down. Well, we try and win, lost this, this, and this, this. And then when you start hearing of churches that is that's saying, well, it's okay for them to have this lifestyle and to do this, and next thing you know. No, that is unrighteous. God tells us what sin is. And you can read it all through. There's things that even Jesus changed in the New Testament. The Ten Commandments is the Ten Commandments. So they have not changed. And Jesus said, uh, besides so ten, I give you another that you love one another as I have loved you. 
and uh, and so and that love is to uh, not a perverted love, but it's a God type love. Love somebody enough to be willing to tell them the truth, and that's a, that's what hurts. It's when you got people that is not living in the right lifestyle. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And you got people that goes to churches and they sleep with other people and then they come in church and shout hallelujah. That's unrighteousness. And God says, I'm going, I'll give them a strong delusion. And they'll believe that lie. They'll believe that, oh, we all right. And they're not. I don't know if half the people understand what fortification is. And that's what, that's another thing that bothers me. Fortification is when it's two people that's not married. And they're having sex together. Then they come to church. And they have children out of wedlock. And God says that's wrong. And they need to get things right with God because if they don't change, sooner or later, God's going to just give them that strong delusion and they're going to be oh, we all right. Don't preach to me, Pastor. We all right. And it breaks my heart. And I know it does God's too because he wants us to be examples, we are his ambassadors. We are God's representatives. And if we abuse that, sooner or later, God is going to do because we have failed to believe the truth. And the word of God is truth. It is not a lie. And when we fail to believe this word, then we set ourselves up that God's just going to let us go. And just, no, God won't do that. Well, if you don't want to serve God now, why do you, would you think God would want you to come to heaven and spend eternity in a place that you don't even want to be there with his people now? So scratch your head. Don't get mad at me because I love you and I'm trying to tell you the truth. You know, uh, we have to believe, we have to read the Word of God. Like the Brians, it says, Study to show thyself approved. Be not conformed to the world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will unto God. God says, You prove to me that you believe my word. You prove to me that you love me like I love you. You prove me that you really are sincere and want to come to heaven. And I'm afraid there's a lot of people, more than ever, in America anyway. And you might go to you might go to Afghanistan, you might go to Iran or Iraq, and you might preach the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And people come running, wanting to know the Lord Jesus Christ. But here in America, there's churches all over the place. And some of them is packed out, some of them aren't. And is it because the ones that's packed out is tickling the other's ears? Or it may not. I don't know. What I'm saying is, yeah, and, and Paul told Timothy, you have to watch because in the last days there'll be those that, that wants their ears tickled. And as long as they hear something that pleases them, they're all right. But if they hear the truth, and remember, Jesus said the truth shall make you free. It's a process. There is things that I don't like that God's word says. And I know that it, it's there for reason. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Love your enemy. Do good unto them. 
and sometimes say, Lord, why? And we can't understand, but God knows why. And if we'll be obedient, if we be willing and obedient, we'll eat the fruit of the land. We'll be blessed. Coming in, blessed going out. That's why I've never had nobody have to call and say, Pastor, why, why aren't you at church? And I know that there's people. We, my wife's sick Sunday. She, she wasn't able to go to church. And I know that we've got people that every once in a while that goes, is going through sickness or something like that, and they can't make it to church. That's understandable. But when people just quit coming to church, then have they believed the lie? Have they been deceived by Satan to think that they're safe and all right? To the point that God will send them a strong delusion that they shall believe it and end up being damned? Wow. Hard? It's God's Word. I'm just trying to enlighten you. I'm trying to help you to make certain that we we stop and think, am I am what I'm doing? Is it right? Am I living right with God? Am I doing the right things? See, we have to check ourselves. I can't check you for you. You could ask me and I'd tell you what I see on the outward side. Unless God gave me a revelation of what was going on in your heart. Which sometimes he has and a lot of times he hasn't. Sad thing of it is, in this day that we're living in, it would be very easy for the church to be raptured out, and nobody would be concerned about what's going on. I think uh, Brother Robson uh, had made a post the other week about that. Uh, what would happen? Would the church be filled? It wants the church raptures out. And I said, well, I don't know that it would or not. Uh, because they left behind. They're not concerned with going to church now. And would they be concerned with the church gone? What percentage of people that is going to church is living the right lifestyle? That God say, mm hmm, ching, ching, yep, they living right, they doing right, they, uh, uh, they're, they believe my word, they're walking in my word, they're obeying my word, and doing everything that I've, the best that their ability is, bring them home, son, bring them home. And then he looks at them, well, they not living right, they doing this, and they doing that, they out partying, they out living, uh, uh, live in a very loose lifestyle. Uh, they don't care about hearing my word. They don't care about praying except when they have a, a need for their greed. They can be stayed behind. Like, like I've said many times, people need to read the series by Tom LaHaye, or Tim LaHaye, uh, Left Behind. Those series, that was the first one. And uh, the very biblical uh, it's been a long, long time, but I remember when they come out, and it would really cause you to do some thinking. And when, when I, as of last night, I was thinking about this. How many people had rather pleasure their own self on Sunday than be in the house of God? That's like it. Verse 12 that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. They don't believe the truth. They don't believe Hebrews where it says, forsake not the sin of yourselves together more as you see these days approaching, as some has. They don't believe that. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is what goes against God. 
You got people that says, oh, it's okay to party. Oh, no, that's an that's herbal drug that God gave us. No. Alcohol, booze, liquor. You start living that lifestyle, you're heading down the wrong road. I've been there and done that. And when I got born again, my life changed. I don't need, I don't need alcohol to get a buzz. If I want a buzz, I'll get hooked up with the Holy Spirit of God and get happy and get excited and not have to worry about getting in trouble, lose my license or killing somebody because my mind isn't clear. It isn't foggy. That's what happens. Even the Word of God says that the drunkards and the uh, uh, even those uh, 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 that's on drugs, not those that are doing it for medicine, but are doing it because they just want to get high. Is it not coming in? Those that are committing adultery, those that are committing fortification. Paul taught about the 17 works of the flesh. And he said, but those that are doing these things, matter of fact, let me see if I can find it real quick like. Do -do. In Galatians chapter 5. Uh, now the works of the flesh, verse 19, are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murderers, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Paul put it as plain as plain could be. Jesus came and forgave the sinners. And several times when Jesus healed somebody, he would tell them, Go sin no more. In other words, don't get caught back up in what got you in the, that position to start with. He didn't come to condemn. He came to set them free. That's through the truth. And Paul said you, the truth. And, well, Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And that's what Paul was trying to tell the Thessalonians. Don't be persuaded by what you see. Don't be deceived. Don't pay attention to a lot of garbage. This looks like, who do you believe on the news? I tell you what, since the past few couple of years, they've weaned me from watching the news. I watch a little bit of the local nightly news, but as far as watching uh, NBC, CBS, ABC, CNN, and uh, Fox News. I don't watch none of them. I watch a little bit of the, the local, and that's it. And because there's too much non-truth, everybody wants to promote their own agenda. And we're living in that day, as I said, I believe that the church could be raptured out and it's going to happen in a twink, not a blink. It'll happen so fast that we go. And those left behind, will it be because they believed the lie, they were deceived, and God let them have that strong delusion? See, Jesus came that none should perish, but everyone have everlasting life. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. God isn't going to make nobody go to heaven 
that don't want to be there. And if you don't like it being with God's people here on earth, you definitely not going to like it being in heaven for eternity with God's people because there's going to be some shouting and singing and praising the Lord. And, uh, and if you can't handle that here, you definitely not going to handle it there. And God's not going to make nobody go against their will. And if you don't want to believe the word of God here, then God will turn you over. Oh my, I don't know if you've seen what I saw, but I hope you have. As it said there in verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God gave shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. There is people that you can talk to right now, and they'll, they'll claim that they're saved, but they will not accept the word of God when you start talking to them and ask them questions. That's why we're right here at it. Of course, Paul thought they was at it then. He said, because as that the day of Christ is at hand, well, if it's at hand then, how much more 2,000 years later is it? We really at hand, and uh, and it's so crazy. I mean, the Revelation talks of the two hundred million man army. China's got that. They become the big player. Where's America? At? We're not number one. Nothing except debt. Think on that, and I don't think that the the leadership of America. Some of them don't have the back of Israel. And if we don't protect Israel, then there's going to be a judgment to pay for America. And that's God's word. You either bless Israel or you're going to be cursed for not blessing Israel. And uh, same with God's word. You obey God's word and everything's fine. You don't, and you won't. There's not nobody that I would turn away from coming to our church. I don't care how they dressed. I don't care what type of lifestyle they they are in. But I'll give you, I'll give them, and I'll give you the same word. I preached to myself as much as I'll preach to anybody else. And the word is sharper than a two-edged sword. Sometimes there is things that our flesh does not like. Yet, if we obey the word of God, the end result is that it will turn for our favor and be a blessing in our life when we do things God's way, not the unrighteous or the worldly way. You know, one of the popular things for high school students, well, everybody's doing it. Well, you see, that's a deception. That's a lie of Satan. Everybody's not doing it. There may be an exceptional few that's not sexually active. There may be a few that's not drinking or on drugs. But they are the ones that are setting themselves up to be blessed by God than the ones that don't. And, uh, and that is why don't let Satan cause you to be deceived. 
That's why it's so important to know what God's Word says so that you can walk in righteousness, right standing with God, in holiness, that you're sanctified, set apart for the work of Jesus Christ. We are his workmanship, created unto good works. We are his representatives, and that's what God's looking for. And when God comes back, he's not coming back for everybody. He's coming back for those that are watching, those that are waiting, those that are praying, those that are, are keeping themselves in right standing with God. And you may disagree with me. And if you're not living in right stand with God, if you're living a loose lifestyle, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that you're not left behind. But if you are, can't say I didn't warn you because I don't want nobody's blood on my hands. The Bible says, tell them the truth. Because if I don't tell them the truth, then they're blood would be on my hands and I don't want that and the way this day and time is people don't have a fear of God they don't and the Bible says to fear God is the beginning of wisdom in other words when you understand you know God is a, a just God he don't give you no extra curve Great. You got one way, and his way is the straight and narrow. Broad is the way to destruction. So I'm going in here tonight. I hope I give you something to think about. And uh, I know that it's this was probably not what we usually, you know, I, I love to teach her, Mr. Uh, a shout hallelujah message and in a way this is if you're living the right way but if it, if it ruffles your fur or your feathers so to speak then look and see is your life lining up with God read go back into uh, Galatians chapter 5 read where I, I read it gives you the 17 works of the flesh and nine works of the spirit. It's up to us to make a decision. We got a free will. And each one of us has. So, without any further de delay, if you've strayed from God, if you've not been serving God, you've not been faithful to God, or if you've never accepted God, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, Let's do it right now, because if you'll believe in your heart, confess with your mouth unto salvation, it is that you can be turned your life toward eternity with God. So let's just pray this simple prayer. Father God, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, all my faults, all my failures. I ask you, Lord, to fill me with your Holy Spirit that from this day on that I can live and serve you the best of my ability. And so, Lord, you lead me, you guide me. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, know that you've been restored or that you've got, got your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And be ready. Get in church. Get in to a place that you can be taught the Word of God. So, you know, that's one of the things that I, uh, I loved about Billy Graham. He would always tell you, get into a church that teaches you the Word of God. Because if you don't, you're going to miss out on a lot of blessings of God. And you could be setting yourself up to be given a strong delusion because you failed to. Well, God bless you. I look forward to tomorrow evening, same time, 6.30,
as we have our Wednesday night Bible study. I invite you to come join us uh, Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, out here at Mountain Harvest Church, Old Town section. We're just one mile off the four lane, the West Alex, uh, there at the caution line. You turn, uh, if you headed towards Baywood on 58, you would turn uh, right at the caution line, go one mile, turn on Waterwheel Road. As you turn, you can cut straight into the church parking lot, or you can go around and come in on the uh, upper side of the parking lot. And uh, again, we'd love to have you. God bless you, and see you tomorrow evening.